We drove in from Germany last night and it was, it was a bit surreal arriving in Poland because there was a familiarity with it. When we got to the border, there was a BP service station, there's Subway, there's McDonald's and things like that. But the place is quite eerie, standing here now in the queue waiting to go into Auschwitz. Last night when we arrived in, there was sort of a misty, eerie sort of feeling. And it was an unusual thing because you could almost taste the death of the place. I'm not sure what I was expecting, and I'm not sure what I'm expecting here, but I'm sure that it's going to leave an impression on me. I'm standing outside Auschwitz One camp in the museum. There are people from all over Europe who seem to be coming here. And it's encouraging to see that through the years the numbers of people visiting here are increasing. I'm not quite sure what we're going to see, but I think the effects will be quite horrific. With the cynical words written over the gate, translated meaning, work will set you free, the Nazis mocked the victims as they arrived here. I've just seen tons of human here, glasses, and tell us behind me, my Jewish brothers and sisters, that leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. This was such a sad and unjust thing that was done to these beautiful people. As an architect, I admire the way this place has been put together. There's great precision and detailing that's gone into every little aspect of it. But behind it, the purpose of this place is truly, truly horrific. Well, in the past, I've had a lump in my throat in the face of death. This place leaves my whole chest feeling as if something is pressing it very, very hard. As I leave Auschwitz 1, I'm going a few kilometres away to a place called Auschwitz Birkenau and I'm told it's much worse than here. The goal and entire focus on that place was the complete annihilation and extermination of all who did not fit the Nazi system. We just parked in the parking facility 
Adjacent to that is a very modern building where modern services are provided. There are books and we had something to eat and drink. A few hundred metres away though is the stark contrast in the symbols and the remains of the past. There are several signs that indicate the Nazism and the hatred of his spouse. One is the sign above Auschwitz I. The second is this building here. The hatred espoused wasn't just against the Jews, it was against everybody who differed from the Nazi ideals. In the meanwhile, I'm standing in the entrance of Auschwitz-Birkenau. In front of me is the remains of a rail carriage. Beneath that are two stones with some very poignant words written on them. Needlessly slaughtered in moments by hatred and darkness, remembered for all eternity with love and light. For all the innocent people who suffered at the hands of madmen, we will remember you and your bravery. This freight car has been placed here to commemorate the Jews deported from Hungary, murdered by German Nazis in auschwitz birkenau death camp. More than 400,000 Jewish men, women and children were deported from Hungary in similar freight cars. And more than 100 transports during the spring and summer of 1944. On arrival, most of them were murdered in the gas chambers here. This place is where many thousands, if not millions of people would have spent their final days before being exterminated by the Nazis. As I'm sitting here in this dormitory in auschwitz birkenau my thoughts go to my great uncle Schmuel Wolfenden, whose final days were in a place like this. It was many, many, many miles away from his loving mother and father and his brother and his sister in South Dunedin who were waiting for him to return. It wasn't just Jews who were affected by this war, the whole world, including South Dunedin. Total destruction and annihilation was the goal of the Nazis, and it happened here in this building. People were both gassed and cremated, leaving no sign of them. Fortunately today, this building is but a ruin. This candle is in remembrance of the many beautiful lives who were cut off from this world. Before we leave this place, I would just like to light nine candles in memory of the victims of this place, the Jews and everybody else that died in this place, because we must forever remember it. May the memory of the victims here be a blessing and a warning to all humanity, and may it bring shalom.